Hello, welcome to Flipped. So today we are on the chapter of iron, okay, and we are talking about blast furnace process. So in the blast furnace, it's where we can get our um, molten iron, which is what we want at the final reaction. So how do we do this? It's actually using three uh, separate things. First one is hematite, which is Fe2O3. This is the main source of iron. As you can see, it's the only one that has iron in, in its uh, chemical formula. Limestone, CaCO3, and coke, which play a part later, as you will see in the chemical reactions. Okay, coke is really just a uh, carbon, basically. Okay, um, so how the how this works is that these three things, okay, hematite, limestone, and coke, I just abbreviated them to HLC. Okay, they are added from the top of the furnace. Okay, so you can see that here. Okay, I add them in from the top. Okay, then what happens is that oxygen is supplied by hot air entering from the bottom of the furnace here. Okay. So I pump in hot air using uh, some pumps from the bottom. And this hot air will contain oxygen, which is needed for the reaction later. And then after all this is done, all the reactions have uh, completed, you will have molten iron here, as you can see. And the thing is that molten iron is denser than uh, molten slag. So slag is something that we'll talk about later as well. Okay, It's an uh, impurity. This is not what we want. We want the iron. But the thing is that uh, due to the reaction, okay, iron will become heavier than slag. And that is, that's a good thing because iron can now be uh, sunk, okay, you'll be drop, you drop to the bottom and then you'll be drained off and hence collected, okay. And this is the final product that we want, iron. Okay, and uh, finally, the, the collected molten iron can be uh, further processed to form different grades of steel, which is, uh, later we'll talk about it as well. Okay, so the conditions inside this blast furnace, okay, it's very hot. Okay, first of all, it's 100, 1,700 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you can see that there are ranges of temperature here, but this is a average, okay, average at 1,700 degrees Celsius. So it's very, very hot, okay. Um, how do we actually uh, isolate this, right? How do we actually uh, insulate this, sorry, okay? It's using magnesium oxide, okay, which is Mg2+, okay, and O. 2 minus okay which is gives you mgo okay this is magnesium oxide and magnesium oxide has a melting point of 2500 degrees celsius so it's no problem uh to withstand the heat so you can see that this inner red coating here okay these are uh, lined with um magnesium oxide okay so that when the reaction happens at 1700 degrees celsius it will not melt okay it will still hold its integrity uh its structure here Okay, and so because of uh, its high melting point, it enables the furnace to withstand the high temperature within, which is inside here. Okay, so now the process is out of the way, let's talk about the chemical reactions. Okay, so here I have the same model here, just that it's shrunken down, okay, because the main thing here is our chemical formulas. Okay, like I mentioned, hematite is the main source of iron, okay, and we want to convert all of hematite into molten iron, okay. And first, okay, you can see that all these uh, stars here, these three things are our main starting material. Okay, so when when you see this star, it means our starting material and what, what happens to them. First of all, let's take a look at coke. Okay, coke is mainly carbon. Okay, it acts as a fuel for the reaction. Okay, it kickstarts the whole reaction. How, how it uh, kickstarts is basically by reacting with uh, oxygen to form carbon dioxide. Okay. So you can see that this equation is in green, right? And then I highlight it with a purple color because this one is used in the next reaction, which is a purple reaction. Okay, so this one, um, it applies for all the colors as well. So it's easier for you to link them up. Okay, so with this CO2, I can proceed to the second step, okay, which is CO2 plus carbon, giving us two units of carbon monoxide. Okay, and it's written here, toxic carbon monoxide produced is used for the next step. Okay, so I carry on to the next step here, okay. Now I'm reacting with my um, hematite, okay? Hematite with um, the product from the second reaction, which is CO, carbon monoxide, gives me molten iron, okay? Molten iron with uh, three CO2, okay? And you can see that this CO that's produced in the second reaction is used as a reducing agent, okay? It reduces this uh, hematite, okay? Hematite to molten iron. Okay, by taking away its uh, oxygen, basically. Okay, and you can see that this uh, CO2 is actually being pumped back into the second reaction so that it can continue again. So it's like a cycle. 
okay the products here can be used to help the second step okay and so keeps generating more co and hence keep generating more um molten iron okay so you can say that oh this is the final step uh so why do i have to continue okay it's because to imp uh, remove the impurities okay and this diamond okay for here and here these are the two final products at the end okay so star means a uh, starting material diamond means a uh, end product okay this is this is not official this is just for you to um, visualize better okay so the fourth step okay it's not carried on from third step but it's, its own step basically because you can see that one to two to three they are all in some in some sense concur uh, concurrent right because after this then it's this then it's this but the fourth step starts on its own entirely with the starting material of limestone which is CaCO3 okay it decomposes into CaO uh, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide and you can see that the description is that limestone this is limestone right it breaks down and the CO2 produced is used in two as well number two okay so you can see that so many reactions produce CO2 is to help um, get to get this uh, carbon monoxide which will help us uh, reduce hematite to give us molten iron that's the final thing that we want right okay so you can see that a lot of reactions produce CO2 okay so with this CO2 oh sorry with this CaO okay I can move on to the next step okay is that now my CaO uh, calcium oxide can react with uh, silicon dioxide okay which is an impurity okay to form this uh, CaSiO3 liquid okay this is um, the main impurity SiO2 okay and this whole thing is called a slag SLAG okay slag is really just something that you don't want okay it's all the impurities mixed together and the good thing is that slag is less dense than iron okay so it floats above iron okay let me just highlight this okay it's less dense okay so it floats above iron okay so back to our diagram here you can see that this is slag this is iron right because slag has a lower density than iron so it's on top iron has a high density so it's below okay and now my iron can be easily collected using this tap here okay iron can just come out come out like this okay drain off from here and slag can be drained off from here uh sorry cannot see slag can be drained off from here okay so finally i want to emphasize on something which is uh this one you can see that molten iron is liquid okay because it's molten it's not solid okay neither is it aqueous okay it's liquid it's a pure metal but in the liquid phase and slag is also in liquid okay it's a compound but it's in the liquid phase okay and these two can be drained off uh respectively okay and that is all for the blast furnace uh process